Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are looking at a FOSS software for business design. And so if, if you're involved in the world of business, you might have run across Trello, which is going to be a software. It's used for team and organization management. You can have your various tasks, planning, strategized up in a system. You can set up groups and a variety of different tools. Of course, Trello has free options and they have paid options. But the biggest deal is, hey, like everything else, it's a private company. They want a whole lot of data, not only from you, but from all your your users. They're going to run it on their own servers. And uh, who knows who has access to it and what they could possibly be doing with that data. Well, there is actually an alternative called Canboard. Now, there are a few different alternatives, like Taiga looks like amazingly rock solid. Taiga is also a lot more complicated to install. Canboard, you can actually download the files, throw it onto your server and be done. And so if you're looking for a solution to get moving fast, and this is what I did with the business I'm creating in the publishing industry, is I wanted to get something up and running fast without spending a lot of overhead. I didn't want to spend a while reading through a bunch of documentation and things. And so we wanted to get something up and running very quickly. And Canboard happens to be the case. It doesn't look the prettiest. Like Taiga looks beautiful, but it's highly functional. It does what we needed to do. And it was literally, I just, I spent in fact about an hour and a half trying to get ISP config to working with subdomains, mostly looking in some documentation, see if I could streamline some processes. And then it took me about 35 seconds to install Canboard. So that's why I want to highlight that if you're looking for some type of service. So you can go to the Canboard projects, canboard.org, K-A-N-B-O, ARD.org, and you can see here it's a free and open source project management software. This will support multiple users, different user roles, administrators, managers, end users. I think there's a fourth user role in there as well. It also supports authenticating roles from APIs. It supports two-factor authentication, a lot of the different services that you need, but on the privacy end, the thing doesn't even require an email for your user's login. So no matter whether you sit on this pure total privacy or, hey, we want deep security, Canboard can actually follow all of that. So just looking briefly at their website, and see the various features. They have some plugins available. So S3 storage, if you want to throw it on up to an to a uh, S3 colander up on Amazon. They have a variety of different things, assigning dates, attaching documents. A lot of these factors are already put in place and uh, you can already set these up. You can, of course, hey, donate to the project. Definitely recommend using that if you're using it on a regular basis. And then they just have a variety of different things. As far as this system, they really don't actually need a full um, MySQL database or Maria database set up. It actually uses SQL Lite directly in a directory. So as long as your web user can access and read write to a certain directory in the server, then you will have the ability to manage this. The downside is that does actually pose a few security holes but for something that you're just getting started with or for something if you're doing it just in an internal LAN, that's going to be just as fine. Uh, very easy to port this guy to a different domain or make a full backup because all of the data is in one central location. You can see you can limit your work processes. So you can set limits on a various different things. You can search for tasks. You can set different colors and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and have a brief look at what this guy is going to look like if we shall. So I am logged in over here. Let me go ahead and uh, see if I can zoom in on the screen a little bit. Just make it a little bit bigger for you guys. That way I don't have to edit this guy afterwards. There we are. So you can see over here we are logged in. I created three users. I'm logged in here as the administrator. On first login, you just log in with admin, admin, and then you can actually just keep the admin account and just change the password, or you can just create a new admin account, delete the existing account, and just have something a little bit more secure. I created a remote user, which I don't have anything set up here to have any remote usability, and then I have the expendable crew member, you know, the, the, the grunt that I assign various tasks and projects to. 
So we can see here under our administrative login, we have your dashboard, we have your profile, project management, user management, group management, plugins, settings, documentation, and logout. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add a group. You can see here that I added this group here in between this, this uh, recording section. So under your group management, you're going to want to come in here and hit a new group. And if you have a large team with a variety of different people doing different things, you're going to want a series of groups. In this case, where we just have a small business with a couple of contractors I'll, I'll have on to do things here and there, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a single group so we can click on it and add members. So if I add a new team member, I can hit add new group members and then um, remote users, the last user I have in here. So sure, let's just go ahead and add remote user to our list. So now we have our administrator. We have two basic users down here. They're all inside of the business group. Now we're gonna want to do this because in order to assign a person a task inside of a project they have to have the permissions and your business group is going to enable you to set up those permissions so it's like go back to the kb here i like managing it from this page here and really i'll just click in on my projects and see this is kind of where i'm at so what i'm going to do is if i want to create a new task for the crew member over here so uh, let's just say get busy, um, find something to do, if I can type right. And then we can set our colors, assignee. Now we have our ability to set our assignees. I'm going to show you how to get this ability in here. This is one of the most frequently asked questions. It's in the documentation, but it's kind of buried. So I'll show you where that happens to be. And then you can select which column it is. We'll just keep it in the backlog for now. And then the priorities. So if you want to set things by priority, let's give it a due date of about a week out from now. And then we'll have our start date of today. Now your estimates and actual time spent. This is actually great for getting client-based estimates and things like that. So once you have all that done, we can give it tags if we want to. We'll go ahead and hit save. So now it's over here, and when our expendable crew member logs in, he'll now see that, oh, he has a new task. In the morning, he can just slide it on over so you know that he's getting ready to work on it. And then as he actually starts working, he can move it over here. And then finally leave it in the done column. And then you can actually go through and close tasks. If you do close the tasks, they disappear from the done column. So I generally are going to keep those open until the whole project is done. Let's go ahead and talk about how to add a project though. So um, just go up here to new project and we'll just call this one a new project. Why not? And giving it an identifier. And then the task limit will tell you how many tasks you can actually have. You can duplicate things from other projects if you want to. We won't bother with any of that. Now, once we land over here, we want to make sure that we have our permissions set. So you want to come on down and find the permissions tab. And then under group name, we're going to do business group. Now, I'm going to show you why you want to do that by not actually adding it yet. So if I were to go up and we have our new project and I want to create a new task. And then I want to assign this to somebody. What you'll find is, oh, I can't assign it to anybody. Why is that? Well, because we have not added it to any group. So let's just say, sure, we'll go ahead and keep our task there. But we're going to go into our project. We're going to configure the project, go on down to our permissions. Now we add our business group to our permissions there. Now if I go on up to our project, I can come down here, edit the task, and now I can assign it to the individual employee. That's why you want to make sure that you're setting up your business groups. All right, so there we are. Now our, now our task is set up right. We have our proper employee there, and then he can move stuff around where he wants. All right, so as you uh, hunt around here, there's a lot of different options inside of here. Uh, of course, when you're creating your individual tasks, you'll have the, the ability here. You can create um, external links. You can do some attachments. So down here, you can see you can send it by email. You can move to another project, duplicate to another project. You can add a screenshot, add a document, add a comment. 
So, so all the basic tasks that you have within Trello, you actually have the ability to do within Canboard, and it's actually fairly simple to figure out how to use. A little bit clunkier in a way, but this these types of project management tools are a little bit uh, a little bit heftier to use overall. But ultimately, we do have some very good options in the FOSS world in order for organizing your teams, organizing your management, understanding what you want to do. So I have a big board, one of these set up that I'm actually using in production for the publishing company to list all the things we're trying to do, all the stuff we're trying to get done. And really, this is an, an excellent alternative. So while Trello does have free options and paid options, what I like about this is I'm hosting it on my own system. Nobody has the data except our organization. And this is just, it's so easy to install. It's so easy to work with that it just gets you up and running within a few minutes. Literally the install, download the files, upload the folder, make sure the data file is, is writable by the web server user and it is done. It's that easy to get set up. Taiga might be a little bit better of an option. That's what some people are saying. I have not had a chance to poke around with it simply because it's a lot more complicated to set up. Whereas this one actually does everything I need it to do. Doesn't look as pretty, but uh, I don't really need it to look pretty. I just need it to work. And so far this works for me. So anyway, there is Canboard. Hopefully this will help you in your project management. Nice free uh, alternative software for Trello and other task-based organization boards. A lot of fun features. There's so much more to it than I showed you in this video. This is just a very brief introduction to it. If you want to know more uh, deep information about it, let me know. I'll be glad to research into it a little bit more, uh, dig a little bit deeper, and uh, maybe show you what I'm doing with it as well. So thanks for coming along, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.